Oops. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I'm searching for letters. Uh, Sean Black, what are you making? Um, scrapbook layout, a um, Halloween scrapbook layout. Two page, right? Two pager, yep. And we'll see, we're gonna go for an hour if I get done and there's a time to do a second layout. I do have some other stuff planned. Oops, that's an F, that's not an E. Uh, Viler Verhoog, love how you just eyeball cutting and arranging. I really need to stop trying to make a masterpiece every time I do a page. I'm so slow at it. I think that's a learned skill because I could do the same thing. And I've gotten much better over the years at sometimes just throw it on there and see what sticks. Absolutely. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Some things don't, sometimes things don't stick. I you just don't use enough glue. Uh, can you find an O and an E in there sure. for me? And I'm going to start stamping this. Capital or little? Oh, whatever. I think mix match looks good on Halloween layouts. I'm just going to use some gesso this, to stamp. This here. would be an example of just, 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 just doing it. Just going with it. Oh, here's a quick, crafty, thrifty tip. Use uh, Save your old packaging. Packaging from like... Um, uh, embossing folders is really good for this. Save it for whenever you need like um, a scrap palette or something. I need to get a pin to poke a hole in my gesso because I don't have cat for it. Another tip is to if you have some like uh, if you buy gesso by the gallon, put some in like a just a little squeeze applicator bottle so you don't have to open up that big gallon of gesso every time. Um, let's see. Uh, Carrie, Carrie Hare is a, is there a, I'm sorry if I'm butchering anybody's names, by the way, I apologize. Is there a good way to blend Crayola colored pencils? I like to practice with those. Yeah, you can take like, um, the white pencil or if you say if you're blending orange, you could take the yellow, take a lighter version of what you have and color over it. That technique is called burnishing and it works really well. You can also get a colorless blender, like Prismacolor has them. That would work, be compatible with your, um, with your Crayolas. Uh, S. Chandler. Hi, Lindsay. If you had a choice between a Sizzix Big Shot Pro and an AccuCut, which would you buy? Oh boy, AccuCut. Is AccuCut, it AccuCut Quilt? AccuCut or? has their craft version of the die cutter on sale for three ninety five right now. So I'm assuming she's she or he is trying to make the decision. Um, Big Shot Pro or AccuCut? Let's see. Well, the AccuCut. If you're looking at like an AccuCut, like a um, like a Grandmark or one of those machines, the dies are going to be different. If it's a professional AccuCut, they take a thicker die that has a wooden base, and they're very expensive. Um, they may have, I know like the AccuCut quilt, I think, is more for crafters, consumers. Um, but if you're looking at the professional AccuCut machine, you're going to be in for spending a lot more on your dies. Oops, I need, oh, there we go. Um, so I think... I think I think I would go with the Big Shot Pro just because I know that the dies would be affordable, would be like your regular consumer dies. Yeah. I mean, on the other hand, I mean, if there's some professional dies that you like, you could probably put make up your own platform so you could crank through this the consumer grade dies. It probably would void a warranty, but I've never been afraid of voiding a warranty. <laughs> So <laughs> warranty, warranty. Um, let's see. Sean Black is from Ireland, so we have Germany and Ireland with us today. Nice. Uh, Violet Verhoog, uh, use the lids from yogurt as paint palettes. Great idea. That is a good idea, especially if you're doing kids' crafts. Oh, yeah. Well, gesso dries a little bit quicker than regular acrylic paint, too. Um, if you oh. need a quick white. Can everyone hear Sarah okay? I think so. People are responding to my talking. Oh, I am good. trying to speak up a little bit. Good. I, I, you know, honestly, I don't know what microphone is getting picked up, if it's the one on my webcam or the one on my computer. <laughs> we'll go for both all at the same time. Oh, could be. I think we'd be getting feedback. Mm -hmm. All right. Halloween. I wonder if anyone's going to watch this uh, after, <laughs> after it's live. Like, oh, my gosh, you just spent five minutes stamping Halloween. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, Debbie Pippin. Good to see you using a foam stamp. What other techniques can be used with them? 
you can use them with ink. You can use them with um, like a glycerin and embossing powder. You can use them anywhere you use rubber stamps. The only thing with ink is that it is going, going to suck up a lot of ink and use up a lot more than if you were using a rubber stamp. So like if you're doing like maybe a holiday card where you're going to keep re-inking that same stamp, it's not a big deal. But that first time you ink it up is going to really suck in the ink. Um, but embossing works. They're so much more affordable than like rubber stamps of that size. That's kind of why I started using them because there was a beautiful set by Stampin' Up called like Lexicon or something like that. It was this gorgeous block, big stamps. And um, they were just way out of my price range. I think they were like 30 bucks. And um, back then that was like huge. A chunk of money. Yeah. And um, so I decided to uh, to give the foam ones a try. And I think I bought every set that Mickey Memories made. And I'm so glad I did because now you can't get them. So... Uh, oh, I think I want to use this one. So these are by Crafty Products. Uh, craft and then then tea. I think I have it. Oops, there's my address. I don't want my address uh, on there. <laughs> Show my address. Oh, oh, let's see. Little cookie, one, two, three, one. It's from Slovenia. Okay. Um, how to and DIY. This is not scrapbooking, but when I try to blend watercolor pencils, it doesn't work. Do you know why? Um, it could be the quality of your pencils. Some pencils um, blend better than others. So if you have um, like more of a children's grade, I mean, some, some brands just don't work very well. If you have like a brand like Derwent or, um, you know, any sort of like name brand, they should blend pretty well. You could be you're using a brush that's too soft and you're not able to move the pigment at all. Um, that's what I would try. Maybe try like a, the brushes I have the most luck with, with watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons are these short, fairly short bristled natural, um, I'm sorry, synthetic brushes. And they, if you use a really soft, like natural brush, it just doesn't have the oomph to move it around. And you have to use so much water that it dilutes it. So you don't want a ton of water, like dip it, pinch off the extra water and then try blending it. And if that doesn't work, then you might want to try upgrading your pencils. Oh, let's see. Oh, Kim's, uh, Kim's Nifty Crafts 41 is from Kansas. Hello, uh, Kim. People are saying that they can hear me good. Good. And it says, uh, Shelly Parchman says it sounds like the sound is coming from camera. There's not much room echo. Oh, okay. So that's good. Good. Mm. It could be all the crap I have down here. Resorbing. Deadening the sound. <laughs> Danielle Tierney Tranter is from the Mojave Desert. Ooh, wow. Um, what is that letter set you're stamping with and why the gesso? Um, I'm using gesso because I know it's going to dry quick. It's going to stand up on the black paper. It's very opaque. Whereas a white ink, I have a really hard time getting white ink to dry. And um, and I just know it's... it's uh, it's going to work with these stamps really well. It's not going to suck up a bunch of ink, but mostly for the drying time and for the opacity. And the stamp set is by Making Memories, but they went out of business a few years ago. So um, I don't know what to, if there's a, if anybody knows of a comparable yeah. one, please leave it in the video description. I mean, in the comments or chat. And that would help everybody out. Um, oh, and these are just metallic rub-ons or like a paste, a metallic paste. And you just kind of dip it like an eye, sh eyeshadow kind of and just rub it along the edge. And it um, it dries through absorption. So you wouldn't want to use this on plastic, but it works really great on any sort of porous material. And it comes in different uh, pearls and lusters and things. All right. So, and I'll show you those stamps with the with ink too. All right. So I kind of like that. I think I'm gonna. Um, I think I might put a couple brads in there. I'm gonna put it down with my adhesive and then put a couple brads. Hopefully, it's. I'll just put the adhesive on. There. Um, there. Gemma Ann Monroe. What is your favorite type of watercolor markers and pencils? Oh boy. Well, there's a, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I like the. Um, for blendability, I like the Spectrum Aquas. They're really nice. Um, I like the Mementos an awful lot, but they don't, once you put them on the paper, they don't lift up quite as well as like the Spectrum Aquas or the Zigs. And I really like Tombow. So those are, I mean, they're all solid choices. You don't need to have them all, um, but they all work really, really well. Oh, and pencils. Um, I really like Derwent. I love the Ink Tense line. Um, and there's a new line that actually I'll show you. I'm going to be, I've actually reviewed it. I'm going to post the review on Monday, I think. Uh, I just want to find the 10 of them. The company is called Fantasia and, or yeah, I think it's Fantasia. Let me just try to find my, I don't know what I did for them, but anyway, they are a um, really great, oh, here they are. This is what it looks like. Thanks. Um, 
they are a water soluble pencil i just tried them out they worked really well and i thought they were very comparable to um to the derwent watercolor line in fact the swatches that i made were um were pretty much spot on the you know it's only a set of 36 but they're on sale at ac more for 16 bucks can't go wrong. regular 25 so yeah i was pretty excited to find those and i was really excited to find out that they worked because i can recommend them to my students now i think i want to put some of these brads in and around here and i don't see my pokey tools so i'm just going to use my scissors to help me with that let's see we've got let's see we've got someone from the uk oh let's yay sneak out or get up let's see uh charlie's angels she how do you do these live tutorials i can hear you both well i'm in the uk oh well this is my first live tutorial so uh <laughs> with help <laughs> Thank goodness Sarah came over because I was uh, I'm like I will be able to pay attention to questions. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, let's see, Lindsay T's from Arizona. Hello from Arizona, but it's nice and warm there. Yeah. Let's see, Sandy Lee. Uh, that reminds me, Lindsay. I took your tip long ago to buy eyeshadow from the dollar store for my scrapbooking, and it's great. Great. Okay. Uh, I apologize. I am probably going to get this name wrong. Paper. J Nimosine, that's probably completely wrong. I apologize. Uh, has a few sets of Faber Castile watercolor pencils, but the color does not move as much as I'd love to. Any suggestions? Um, I would again try a um, short bristled na uh, synthetic brush like like these. Um, probably not quite as wide and not very much water. You want to kind of scrub in there and lift up the pigment. Um, the Albright Drawer pencils by Faber Castell are fantastic. The other ones are not as good. The the um, I think they're called like Soft Grip or Aqua Grip or mm -hmm. something like that. They're not as good, um, but they still should move for you. They're not. I mean, it's not a bad brand or anything. It's just more of like a student grade. So I would try that. I think you're probably just putting too much water and using a brush that's a little too soft. Okay, let's see. Uh, Charlie's Angels. What exactly are gelatos? Gelatos are a, um, they're kind of like a water soluble oil pastel. In fact, I just, I'm going to be posting a review this weekend on the new Prima water soluble oil pastels and the gelatos are very similar. Um, they're like a kind of lipstick like consistency product, um, like a crayon, and you can blend them by smudging them with your finger or with water. So they're essentially a water soluble oil pastel. Uh, how to and DIY? Can you please do a live painting, please? That's so cool. <laughs> that is the next thing I have. I'm um, planning actually. Um, so I'm just kind of go. I'm kind of thinking. I need a little something. I love having this background show through as much as possible, but I feel like I want a little bit, um, a little bit more pattern. So I'm going to put in some of this washi tape. Is that from your recent haul video? This is not. Oh. This uh, I, I this was a clearance one, I'm sure, because it's a Scotch brand, and I'm sure I didn't pay you know full price for those. <laughs> um, and then these are from Paper Mart. These other ones, so I like to. If I see ninety, I'm sure these were ninety nine cents at Joann's or something on sale. I like the Scotch has a has a lot more on a roll than other brands. Yeah. Ah. The thing is, oh, yes, yeah, so that's another thing. Use your tape because I have a feeling that these are going to have a shelf life and they're eventually just going to be a stuck, big, gobby mess. Yes. Uh, and I, re I ran into that a little tip. I, again, with my trusty X Acto knife because I had some tape, washi tape that I hadn't used in a while and it had stuck, kind of stuck to itself. I took my X Acto knife and scraped along until the tape loosened up and then I could use it and it stopped coming off in little bits and bobs and pieces because I could just take that exacto knife blade and just trim along until I, you know, scrape it up until I could get it going again. Oh good. So if you're having trouble with that, try your little exact trusty exacto blade to uh, get that going. Yeah. It's surprising how much stuff has a shelf life and how you know, we stockpile stuff and Lord. then we go to use it, we hoard it, and then, then we can't use it. Because <laughs> it's so pretty, we don't want to waste it on yep. just anything. Yep. Oh, what do you think? Is that done? You think um, that's done? I like it, yeah. I, yeah, I like it. I don't know, maybe, do you have like some, uh, just, oh, you got those buttons there. Oh, yeah, I got some buttons. buttons when in doubt, I had a button. Um, can never have too many buttons. Oh, yes, yes, I like the buttons. Let's this see. This is from a girl who has like, Huge jars of buttons. Oh, I even have a purple one in here. Ooh, purple's good. That's an awful bright purple. Mm, I might, oh, that's a little uh, too. I might have to. That's a springy. That's a springy. I purple. need an earthy purple. 
A smoky purple. A smoky purple? I have a smoky purple snap, but it's all the way to the bottom. I don't know if I can uh, get it. I'm chasing it. I'm chasing it to the bottom of the jar. I can't get it. Oh, well. Um, that one's going to have to. Heavy Pippin. I think gelatos also have a limited shelf life. Can they be refreshed? Um, I would maybe try misting it with a little bit of water. I did notice that too. They do tend to dry out. And you know, I was comparing my new Primas with like the old, my uh, portfolios, which I've had for a while, which are another water soluble oil pastel and the, um, the gelatos. I did notice that some were drier and some people have said they've had a hard time with, um, with them drying out. So yeah, just like anything. Mm. Oh, this is one of my favorite tips. I want to share it. If you have to, like you have a bun and it looks kind of plain, but you don't want to bother with threading them. If you just cut like a little sliver of um, mm -hmm. pattern paper, you can use that as thread. Just thread it through your button. It's really easy. You don't need to use a needle or anything. And, um, and it matches. And you would probably just be throwing that little scrap away anyway, because it's, you know, just a little piece. Clever. I never, I would never have thought of that. Let's see. Uh, Sean Black, what brand of paint do you suggest for acrylics? I really like Liquitex. That's my favorite um, for like an artist grade. Ceram Delta Ceram Coat is good for a crafter grade. And um, Chrome, what's it? I think Chrome Acryl is a good craft brand that you can get like online, especially if you teach like a sip and paint or something like that and you need to have a, um, a good amount and you don't have a huge budget. Uh, it's still pretty good quality. Oh, a uh, suggestion. Uh, paper kanje nemosine again I apologize I know I'm not saying that right uh, maybe with washi tape it would help to heat it up in the microwave for a short time yeah that, that would help good yeah good idea or the hair dryer or something as someone suggested um, let's see uh, there was someone that mentioned using your uh, embossing uh, Raven MC, you can also use your heat tool and lightly heat the tape to reactivate it. Oh, good idea. Uh, Lepins, Andrea, please would you do a tutorial on using pan pastels soon? Greetings from Belgium. Oh, there we go. See, I got to use the pan pastels. See, now totally. you have to have them now. You must. You must I already have them. I don't need to now use you them. Have, now you, you have, <laughs> I have to have them. I have to. Um... Catherine Oldfield. Hey, Kathy. Kathy. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. Didn't see notice till just now. Love how the page is coming together. Oh, Kathy, I miss you. Oh, my gosh. I was going to call you last night. I haven't talked to you in forever. I'll call you later today, Kath. <laughs> uh, uh, Charlie's Angel. Sarah, are you still a stamping up demo? Is it going well for you? Uh, must be a different. I'm not. Maybe I've she never, means Kathy. Kathy is Kathy a is Kathy's the, demo. Yeah, Kathy is the stamping up demo lady, not I. I just like to buy the stamping up stamps and use <laughs> them. She can chat with Kathy in the comments. Yes, she's right there. Uh, in Kathy. The, uh, the chat. Yep, Kathy is on the chat now. So if you have questions, you can talk to her directly. Uh, Sandy Lee. Uh, Lindsay, what do you think about this new adult coloring book trend? Oh, I think it's fantastic. I honestly do. I think that um, I think it's getting people to relax. It's it's kind of what we as stampers have known all along that coloring is fun. <laughs> Sometimes you just break out the stamps and color some stuff. Oh, I'm getting into my big scrapbook bag because I need some ink. I am going to use the ink with a foam stamp so you guys can see how that works. I think I'm going to use purple because I don't think it's going to show up really brightly on my background paper. And I think I might grab a little brown too just so I can tone it down. Uh, how to and DIY. Have you tried Bob Ross oil colors? And if yes, are they good? I have tried them. They're fine. Yeah, it's been a long time though. They're manufactured by. See what happens when when um, companies do like kind of they when when people private label things like Susan Chiwi, Bob Ross, different like kind of celebrity painters. They go to like a um, a reputable paint company and they have them just made with their own label and the colors that they prefer. And uh, that's made by Martin Weber, I believe. And that is, um, I would call it a good student grade, kind of like on the same level as Winton. The thing I do like about their paints is they're in a plastic tube and they don't seem to separate. I only have a couple Bob Ross colors. Um, and it was a while ago when I bought them, but they were, they were good quality. Uh, Tilted Asylum, Tamara Dozier. Hey, Lindsay, don't forget the date. I'm assuming she means on the page. Yeah, I'm looking for 2015 stamps right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stamp it with the ink. Uh, Kathy, what about some raffia or jute for texture and goes with your costume? Great idea. That's a great idea. I wonder if I have any left. Kathy. 
I uh, Ruthie M87. Hello from Illinois. Listening on my phone at work. Ooh. All right. Bring up the work day for people. Awesome. I was hoping people could catch on their lunch break. So I know if I tried this on the, like on the weekend, there'd be no way it would just be yeah, with mean. kids oh, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stampin' Kitty. Oh, she had a thing for Cricket. Um, just an FYI, Cricket is having a 35% off digital image sets code, 35 digital. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a good deal. I haven't, well, I don't think I could. I don't have, um, I don't, I have the old machine. Mm. But Melody could can. say if you could use those with your, well, I mean, I can use anything with my machine because I have sure cuts a lot software, but yeah. that's not available anymore, which is kind of a drag. 2015. Karen Robertson, hello from Ontario, Canada. So we're getting people from all over. Wow, that's awesome. Let's see, I need a one and an O. Oh, uh, Christina Siocaro, hello from Romania. Wow, Romania, holy cow, people, this is awesome. Let's see, uh, Maritza Santiago, you should make this a weekly feature. This will be, what are you doing next Friday? <laughs> uh, nothing right now. I can come over to answer some more questions. Awesome. That'd be cool. I would totally do this every week. This is, I'm having a ball. This oh, I think I want that one. Nice and I get to watch you and talk and, you know, have some coffee. Awesome. And maybe some tea later on. Who knows? Mm. I got the tea pet. The tea kettle is over there that you suggested my husband get for me. Uh, well, you know, I gave him that gift. I was like, you can have this gift idea. And he took it. That was a great idea. <laughs> All right. So I am going to ink this up with purple and I don't I'm not worried about contaminating the brown because brown is brown and purple is just gonna make it brown so I'm just gonna go with that is against me I'm <laughs> again. I didn't touch the thing it must be because I'm um, that ha you know what that happens to me too sometimes I have okay, to like so take a little me and my no it's my me too. sturdy self I know I, I notice like sometimes I have to just lift up the little lever and make sure it's really in position uh, oh, we have Violet Verhoog is from Chatham, Ontario. Denise A is from Oklahoma. We uh, have wow. Maritza Santiago is from Darby, Pennsylvania. Nice. Oh, yeah, it is Friday the 13th today. Someone just, uh, Friday the 13th would be next week. I'm sorry. Oh, that, that would, that would be a good one. That would be for, ha for Halloween. Yeah. Could do, yeah. We'll do a painting next weekend, next uh, Friday. Oh, okay. painting. That would work. Uh, Alan Brown is from Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, Debbie is at the Texas Motor Speedway for NASCAR races. Wow. She, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Macabre Web, could you make a tutorial about making holiday decor with recycle bowls? Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. I don't see why not. I think I could add that little owl in there. Uh, how to and DIY is in Texas. Kim S is from Massachusetts. Beverly is the west coast of Florida. Wow. So we got a nice, nice uh, array of people. Wow. On my computer, it says there are 113 people watching right now. Yep. That's so awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, Carrie Hari is Somerset, Mass. Raven MC is in Texas. Hey, you know, I love Texas. I just will never go in July. My husband graduated <laughs> from basic training, and I went down to Texas in July, and it was hot. No, <laughs> um, Tilted Asylum is from Joplin, Missouri. We got uh, 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 Raining Queen 1975 from Honolulu. Oh, I oh, bet nice. it's nice there. I bet. It's always nice there. Uh, we got Ohio, New York. Oh, Sandy Lee, I need those little stamp pads. Maybe I should buy several when I have one of those 25% off everything Michael's coupons. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you have a Joann's, but they uh, they also have sales online, and they'll do um, – see if I can sneak that into the report. Guys. Um, they have – like they'll have fifty percent off all of their stamping sometimes, mm -hmm. so that you can get those the sets of four for five dollars. Mm, those are good. That's good. Yeah, they'll do that, and they do it online, so you don't have to have. If as long as you're in the states, which I should probably they probably are, or if you're in Canada, as long as it's not Quebec, they don't they won't ship to Quebec because the language laws. But, oh, okay. 
Uh, Linda Deskins from Maine. How about a tutorial for a Christmas card? I got a lot of, actually next Friday uh, will be the first week of our 12 Days of craft Craftmas. And um, Vicki from Clips and Cuts, I know a lot of you guys are, are fans of Vicki's. We are both going to be doing a Christmas card video. And I've seen hers already and it is adorable. And mine is in my mind's eye right now. And it's going to be fabulous. I can just, <laughs> I haven't made it yet, but I'm telling it's you what, gonna be awesome. it's going to be a good one. <laughs> um, hello from Puerto Rico. Could you do a tutorial on a one layer vintage card or tag? Ooh. I'm having a difficult time finding inspiration and can't find one that is one layer and easy to mail from it's Anna Abruna. Oh, that's a good challenge. That Maybe is, that is an excellent challenge. But did she say vintage or Christmas or both? Well, she just said one layer vintage card or tag. Hmm. So oh. really you could do any, you could do Christmas or yeah. Halloween or a birthday. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, we got someone from the Netherlands. Oh, wow. This is crazy. I can't I believe know. how everyone's from everywhere. I was wondering, like, with this time of day, if I, we would get more people from a certain area. I love how washi tape is, like, translucent, and you can kind of layer the patterns and get, like, kind of that marrying of patterns together. I think that looks kind of cool. All right. So let's see if this layout looks done or not. Let's see. Halloween 2015. What do you think? Think. Oh, look, that fits on the screen pretty well. Oh, boy. Let's see. I'm getting behind on the questions. Okay. Uh, Danielle Just Justiano, what embossing ink do you prefer? I have a lot of issues getting my embossing powders to stick, and what embossing powders do you prefer? Um, I like to use glycerin, actually. I, I have a cheap embossing pad that I got. Um, I, I think it was for AC Moore. It was one of those ink it up dollar deals. Mm -hmm. And um, I use that and I just re-ink it with glycerin and I haven't had any trouble. But, and also Versafine's a good one. If you're looking for name brand one, I have used like the Versafine black and I've inked it up with like, you know, black embossing powder. Like if I wasn't, wasn't sure if I wanted to emboss it or not, I just start off with the, uh, with the ink and then decide. All right, let's see. We got hellos from Denmark, Minnesota, Connecticut, Sweden, St. Louis, oh, wow. Missouri, another UK. We're getting all sorts of people. Wow. That's awesome. What do you think of the buttons on this tree? Is that too cute or is it? Um, I think the big purple, the big ones are a little too a little much. A little too big. I like the little ones. Okay. Because that's a great, that's a great tree. It's kind of a fun tree. That was one of my uh, big lot two dollar deals uh, it was a disney it's a, like a disney it was a disney tree a disney how Mouse uh maritza santiago how do you store your packaging i find inspiration everything i'm now being swallowed up by all that potential oh oh packaging not to mail things but to reuse oh boy um i have a couple junk drawers honestly it's not pretty but i'll show you uh just uh, I have these um these big drawers. They fit in the cube units that I have that are by Croppen style, and I just chuck it all in there. Um, so it's kind of a big open big open drawer. Not not nothing nothing too fancy, I'm afraid. I can use hot glue on those. Uh, Benny Chavez, Lindsay, is there anything I can add to those little memento stamp pads when they dry up to get the most ink out of them? I would get, go ahead and get reinkers. Uh, Sarah and I were just talking about that before we went live yes. about the memento reinkers. Um, I, I finally splurged and bought some good, some good ink, ink pads. I finally did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I think if you collect the, wait until like Joanne's has a 50% off sale. And then if you're, if you're in the States or Canada and, um, I would get a few at a time until you have, you know, kind of write down as they, as your ink pads go dry. So you kind of have, you know, which ones you need to buy first and, um, and then just refill them with that. I have a bunch of Stampin' Up! inks too. For now, I've been just re-inking with, you know, with my closest Stampin' Up! colors, but um, I do like the memento. I like that I can use my uh, Copic markers or my other alcohol markers over them and, um, and they don't bleed. So so yeah, I would just, I would splurge. Reinkers are not a bad investment. You can use them as watercolors. You can use them for so many different mixed media techniques. You can use them to dye ribbon and stuff. So um, I think it's worth the splurge rather than making up something that might not, that may, you know, you may be frustrated using. 
All right. How was this paper? Uh, oh, wait, oh. there's die cuts with this kit. I forgot there's die cuts with these oh. papers. I got to use it. Oh, and I think I want a spider web on that one. I'll have to think about it. I'm just going to lay that there for a second. If anybody has any suggestions, <laughs> feel free. Uh, Charlie's Angels. Do you like the new fine tip stamping up glue pen? I love it, but find it a little too runny at times. But that may just be me, me being heavy handed. This is the first time I've used it. I like it. Um, you know, I've, I don't know if it's going to stay unclogged. It seems like the, the cap is pretty, has a nice long needle on it. Um, oh, I need a journal. Oh, Harry Har Hari says the Memento Dew Drops are half off on Joanne's online <gasps> only right now. Oh, well, there you go, guys. The other, the Rinkers probably are too then. Probably. Uh, we have a De Des, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, someone from there. Ooh. I know I'm getting behind on these. Let's see. Make sure the questions. If, if we yeah, can get I'm trying get everybody's to make questions. sure I get everybody. Awesome. Well, you'll tuck that behind this. Uh, Charlie's Angels, I'm a third time demo and just starting this YouTube thing and blogging. I'm part of a blog, Hop ATM, which is going well. I think it takes the right circumstances, so keep trying. What's your blog? What's my blog? Yep. Oh, that's me. Oh, it's uh, it, the frugalcrafter.wordpress.com. And UK Dolly D. What type of scrapbooks do you use? I use the. Um, I don't know if I have one down here. Oh, actually, could you pass me that gray one? It's way on top of that paper mart box up there. Um, I use the D rings by um, We Are Memory Keepers. They are the best. I have not had. I what? once I. No. Oh no, the box that says Paper Mart in handwriting oh. there on top. Oh, there's there a we go. yeah. There's that one. I'll show you in just a second. This one hasn't been um, been used yet, but this is the uh, leather. It's actually a imitation leather, I believe. Um, a faux leather. A faux leather. A D faux ring, leather. and I like the D ring because you can open it up wherever you need to to put a new page in, and um, y you know the page protectors are pretty affordable and easy to find, and it's worked really well and it seems to be really sturdy. I have. I have probably eight of them. I do one per year, so um, they work great. I used to use the Pioneer ones that were D-ring, and I really liked them, but they I couldn't find them after a while. And I did find that they kind of popped open a lot of times, so I had issues with, you know, the kids. They're really hard to handle. That's the only downside to that. If you're, like, um, little children can have a hard time opening and closing it and holding it without dropping them because they are so big. So, you know, depending on that, you might prefer a postbound. Or smaller D ring album. I think I like that there. Uh, Jazzy Ke Kevaboo 22. What techniques would you recommend for a beginner watercolor painter? And she's from Central Florida. I would recommend learning how to do um, washes, uh, practicing brush control, using your brush at a 90 degree angle and, and varying pressure to get um, used to controlling those round brushes. Um, washes are really great techniques. Work on wetting the paper and adding colors to it. Work on doing a controlled wash where you make a bead of color and then you pull it down with your brush and add more color to the bead as you go. Um, but honestly, I would, I would just start painting. Like follow some beginner tutorials. I have oh, probably about 100 on my channel, just beginner watercolor tutorials. And just you're going to learn the techniques as you make your paintings. And I think it's a little more fun to do it that way. It's kind of like um, instead of like just playing scales on a piano, you're actually playing a song, you know. Uh, uh, Leia from the UK. Uh, is this recorded as I missed the beginning and would love to hear about some of the products and shapes used? You are going to be putting this on. It will be live. I probably, if not right after, sometimes it takes a while for YouTube to process it. So if it's not live right after, it will be like probably in like an hour or so. Okay. Um, okay. And the poor person whose name I've been mispronouncing, it, we're going to call her Anna. <laughs> oh. Why don't you just call me Anna? Um, what's the difference between tempera colors and watercolors? Um, they're both water soluble mediums. Tempera usually has a little bit more filler. It's usually a little more opaque, kind of like gouache, like gouache and tempera. Usually when you're thinking of tempera, you're thinking of a children's paint, like a poster paint. Um, so it's, it's essentially the same though. If you're trying to use it in place of watercolor, it's not going to be as vivid or as transparent as, um, as a watercolor. I'm just trying to figure out if I want to add any more things to this. 
more like that. All right. Uh, Kim S., I would love to see a tutorial on stamp carving. Have you already done one? I haven't. I've got the supplies to do it. I just haven't had a chance to film it yet. So I will be doing that. It will be, um, it'll be coming soon. Oh, and so after I've got pretty much, I always like kind of approach my scrapbook pages like photos first, then like a title, then journaling, which I have the space there. I just, I probably won't take time to write it out um, until after the broadcast, but, um, and then I go in with embellishments, kind of adding to until I feel like it's done. So um, just wanted to. Uh, Kathy still thinks maybe you should add some jute arafia. Oh yes, <laughs> jute arafia. What do I have to do with that? Where is that? Where is it? I think I, you know, I think I might have to go around the neighborhood and pick up all the pieces that fell out of my costumes. I don't think I, actually, I might have some little paper. Paper raffia here. Uh, Anna also says yes to stamp carving. So you have two. Okay, I've got to get on the stick on that one then. Uh, Sandy Lee, G uh, Lay, Lee, Lindsay, do you think you'll do another craft room tour this January? And someone else would like a craft, another, uh, Maritza would like to also see a craft room tour. Oh, if I, if my craft room has changed very much, I will. I'm trying to think if it's changed that much since my last one. I did, I didn't feel like it had changed that much the last time. So instead of just the regular tour, I did kind of each part of my craft room. I, I kind of broke it down and showed how I stored each type of supplies in my craft room. So I think... I'm trying to think. I don't think I've changed it all that much. Mm. I'd probably refer to the older videos. Kathy shot one for me um, probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And that one was pretty, I don't think it's changed much since that. And then, so that's why I did the storage video this year because I thought that it just, it didn't really deserve a new, a new video since it hadn't, I hadn't really done much to it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Linda Henson. Hello. Uh, hi, Lindsay. Are you going to do any Christmas crafts? 12 of them at least. <laughs> we have the 12 days of craftness coming up and I've teamed up with six YouTubers that I absolutely love. And we're going to be bringing, I'll be bringing you six, uh, at least I'll be bringing you six in that, that vicinity and they'll be bringing six. So we will have 12 new craft tutorials together um there'll be cards home decor teachers gifts um a painting cinnamon cooney is going to be on with a painting mm -hmm. um so it's going to be a lot of fun and something, uh, for everyone. something for everyone and hopefully kind of like easy things that that anybody can make that will be things that people actually want you know because sometimes it can be really hard to, to to figure out it can be hard enough to buy a gift that some that's not going to collect dust but to make something that people actually want and will use um it's very challenging yes. especially when you're getting so many things at once like people do at at christmas time so uh lindsay i don't see many spectrum noir coloring i have a hard time blending them what do you suggest um i would suggest practice i would suggest using the lighter colors um, like kind of coloring your item in with a lighter color first and then um, going in with then coloring from dark to light after you've kind of colored the whole thing with your lighter color. They are a little bit more challenging to blend. I found, I'm not exactly sure why, but they just feel like the, the colors aren't as fluid as as other markers. Um, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They just seem to take a little bit more of a learning curve than others. I need to use that a little bit. Uh, Valerie Lewis, I have a thin line glue gun like yours, but it is clogged and only drips glue out. Any suggestions on how to unclog? Mine isn't really that thin. Mine's a pretty, mine's a pretty standard tip. Um, and I haven't had it clog me. Are you sure that it's not just kind of burning out? Cause sometimes the guns burn out. They me should be, be melting. I've burned through several in my crafting career. So they, it could be that, that it's just burnt out. Uh, Carly's crafty corner and shop. The memento re-inkers are on sale for two ninety nine at Joanne's. Oh, great. So if anybody needs any re-inkers, Joanne's will be the place to get them right now. It looks like. Nice. Um, uh, Carla's Crafty Corner Shop. What is raffia? It's a, um, it's, it's actually comes from these up like very long branched palm trees. It's a grass type grass from like the, or leaf from this type of palm tree. And, um, I think like the, the strands can grow like six feet long or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, some jute would be good. I think I've in that little drawer right in front of you right here. Oh, actually. Oh, you mean the big, big, uh, big coat of yeah. assorted fibers yep there we go i've got some jute here let's see what can we do with this uh 
Jazzy Kevibu 22 for a source of inspiration, you should come up with some craft challenges for us to try out. That would be kind of fun. It would be. And then people could send in pictures or, and you could show them online to see what different people come up with. Oh, that'd be a good idea. Anyone can also share their, uh, their artwork on the Facebook group. Uh, the oh, frugal that's... crafter and just go to facebook.com slash the frugal crafter and um share your artwork there too you could also um i'm very i'm always a little confused about how to find the stuff but if you like go on instagram and you and you post your work and you like i think you can do like send it to me like at the frugal crafter or if you hashtag the frugal crafter i go and search that every once in a while to see mm -hmm. what people have been uploading and um that's always kind of cool to see i'm very unhip i'm not on facebook or instagram i'm uh, let's see uh, Debbie Pippin my scrappy friends are always telling me to stop adding product to my page how <laughs> do you know when enough is enough for your page Pro uh, at the point where I feel like oh I overdid it that's usually when I stop <laughs> so I usually go a little bit beyond I usually yeah. overshoot a little bit I also find if I start uh, looking at stuff and taking stuff putting stuff on and taking it off I find sometimes getting up and walking away and getting a drink or making some tea or you know whatever uh and i come back that helps me decide that i'm done yeah sometimes just walking away for a few minutes um kitty cat creations what are some people who inspire you to do everyday crafts or everyday work Every day, some people. Can you read that again? What are some people? I think they meant who. Oh, okay. Who are some people who inspire you to do every to do everyday crafts or everyday work? Do you think they mean like to to make something every day, or people that know. inspire me every day? I'm uh, sure. Oh boy. Um. Oh gee. Uh. <laughs> I don't I don't watch a ton of, of videos YouTube videos or visit too many blogs because I don't want to subconsciously copy people um, gosh I'm, I feel like I'm on the spot now <laughs> uh, let me think I guess you know sometimes I'll just scroll through like Pinterest or Instagram especially if I'm like trying to come up with an idea for a kids class and I find that quite inspiring um, um, there's, there's a few like YouTubers I subscribe to that are like um, there's an art journaler Jenny Belly. She usually gets, she always I mean she does more like she'll talk about the why of why we're creative instead of it being like a project. It's not so much a project, but talk about the why. Um, I read I listened to a really great pod. It wasn't a podcast. It was an interview with John Cleese, and he was talking about creativity, like oh. and how creativity works, and um, how you have to give yourself time without pressure to be creative. I like to listen to stuff like that yeah. and podcasts. And um, I find like the paper clipping round table to be very inspiring. Just I for some I think that I, I learn very like I write, I absorb information a lot better in audio format. So um, I would say stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm always I, I always have some sort of stimulation going, whether it's like um like I'll have you know shows on Netflix going or something or podcasts going or something that's kind of like I'm finding interesting at the moment mm. not necessarily art related but um, but something that I'm finding interesting at the moment um let's see Bonnie Lee have you ever used gold foil and which technique do you like best the only thing I've ever used foil wise was a um, well actually I had the stuff that you use like a heat and stick powder or adhesive and you press the foil into and you rub it down um, and I wasn't that impressed with it and I've all I also had this hot pen that I found that I got at the dollar store like years ago and I use that a bit but but the novelty wore off pretty quickly so I really haven't um, haven't done much with that maybe I will I could probably use my creative hot marks on that oh mm. I just went over my two I don't know do that <laughs> and the other nice thing about washi tape it peels right up peel it off. um how to and diy would like you to send some snow to central texas oh happy to how much well, you we want don't, we don't have any yet oh, we will <laughs> soon enough yep. i'm sure we've been lucky we haven't gotten any this time last year oh man um, <sighs> Let's see, Ver Verencia, tuning in from Massachusetts. Question, I have a yes. brand new mini distress ink pad that got dried out because the lid fell off. How can I revive it? I would use water and glycerin water mixed together. Water and glycerin, yep. okay. 
I think that's what's in the ink refresher too, the the uh, brand name ink mm -hmm. refresher, the Ranger brand. I, I mean, I can't say I'm not a, you know, I don't work for them, but that's what I would guess is in there. It can't hurt to try. And I don't think, yeah, it's dried up, right? I mean, yeah. you could buy Ranker and put Ranker in it, but it sounds like there's already ink. You just left the, the lid fell off. The lid came off, so. Uh, Sandy Lee, one of my nephews is coming over tomorrow for the day, mm -hmm. and I need to do a craft with him. Any crafty boy ideas? Oh, let's see. Um, boys generally like to do clay. I find that to be a very popular like craft when I'm doing library crafts with boys. Um, you could do clay Christmas ornaments. You could do um, just any sort of clay figurines. Let them sculpt. Like um, get like a, just a multi pack of colored sculpey and let them you know make what they want, or even just plain sculpey and let them paint it after you bake it. That's what I would recommend. Uh, Karen Robertson, have you done any pocket letters? I haven't. It looks kind of neat. Do you know what they are? I don't. So they I are, ask you what they were. They are, um, they're done with, like baseball card page protectors and they're almost like, um, Project Life except the, you, I think you would, you may, you like do a whole page, like a layout of them and then you mail them off to somebody. Like you can fold them up so they fit in an oh, envelope. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is kind of neat. So, uh, you know, but I haven't, I haven't done any. I, I like the concept, but I need, I need the, I need a reason. I guess I need a reason to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I do seem a little kind of crazy and random, but I actually usually have a reason if I'm doing something, if I'm crafting <laughs> something. I do. I mean, there's a reason. <laughs> um usually when i'm making something so i need i need to have the reason before i before i make it especially when i do a tutorial because i you know want to give people a reason why they might want to make it too uh danielle tierney tranter how about having a board for sharing work on pinterest yeah i wonder how that works so can i make a board and people can add to it I don't know. I don't. Or would I have to pin it? Or you would probably. You would have to put stuff on it. Oh yeah, could I could do that. I could do that. And that, I mean, that wouldn't take any more time because that would just be uploading yeah. whatever you already have on the computer up to right. a board. Right. Right. Yeah. Hazel, she's being weird. Well, hey, I think we're just about the hour mark. Do you want to see if we can? We could see if we can, like, uh, turn the camera on us. And... Oh God, I don't know. I didn't put any makeup on. Oh today. yeah, me neither. I did take a shower though, so I'm already. I'm gonna see if I can change the camera. Oh, Beverly Moss, are fancy. you cold up there? Well, Beverly, it's, not too it's bad actually right now. when I came over, it was 55, which is pretty warm for this time of year. Let's see. Can I turn my camera? I don't know if I can change my camera. I'm gonna try. Let's see what happens. Let's see. We'll keep talking. <laughs> we'll keep um, talking. Oh gosh, what did they do? <gasps> Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, oh, Anna, what can I do with crumble crumbly femo clay? I tried baby mineral oil and I think it makes it less sturdy. Um, oh, that's a tough one. I have done that. I have um I don't remember how I changed my camera. Um, I have added a clay conditioner. I've tried baby oil, and I think at, at some point you it just you just like kind of have to toss it. Sometimes you get you truck baked, up. like the the clay gets baked in the truck. The truck gets too hot, yeah. and then yeah. um, and then there's not really anything else you can do, unfortunately. Um, Tilted Asylum, Lindsay, you can make a Pinterest board that people can add to. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Could you do a tutorial on how to blend street spectrum no oh spectrum noir markers typo oh um yeah probably let's see they they pretty much go I don't know how to turn the change the camera um they pretty much work just the same as any alcohol marker they're just a little bit trickier to blend but yeah I can uh, let me make a note of that just so I don't write it down yeah better write it down I'm gonna forget about it let's do uh, how many do one or two more questions and then um, well yeah we could do a couple more uh, let's see how to and DIY please do more soap tutorials so we have soap spectrum noir some Christmas stuff which of course you already yep. have uh, planned but yeah I think uh, I think people, I think, uh, I'm not getting any more questions. I don't know all if right. got them all answered or well, let's let's show the final project. Let's show the final, the final thing here. We have our Halloween 2015 layout. I uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And the replay will be available here. I've got some glare on that picture. So um, if you have any, if you guys, if you could do me a favor, if you could just hop into the um 
the comment section after this goes off air and just let me know that you are here because the chat will go away and I won't be able to see. I'm going to see if I can maybe catch some of it, highlight some of it and copy it and paste it into the chat, but I'm not guaranteed that I can do that. Um, just let me know that you were here and let me know what you thought about the live show and uh, hopefully we can bring you one every week or something. If Sarah's yeah. willing, yeah. I, I'm free on Fridays. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting. Tempera colors and watercolors. Um, they're both water soluble mediums. Tempera usually has a little bit more filler. It's usually a little more opaque, kind of like gouache, like gouache and tempera. Usually, when you're thinking of tempera, you're thinking of a children's paint, like a poster paint. Um, so it's it's essentially the same, though. If you're trying to use it in place of watercolor, it's not going to be as vivid or as transparent as um, as a watercolor. I'm just trying to figure out if I want to add any more things to this oh, I like that all right uh kim s i would love to see a tutorial on stamp carving have you already done one i haven't i've got the supplies to do it i just haven't had a chance to film it yet so i will be doing that it will be um it'll be coming soon oh and so after i've got pretty much i always like kind of approach my scrapbook pages like photos first then like a title then journaling which i have the space there i just i probably won't take time to write it out um until after the broadcast but um and then i go in with embellishments kind of adding to until i feel like it's done so um just wanted to uh kathy it still thinks maybe you should add some juarafia oh yes <laughs> juarafia what the heck do i do with that where is that? Where is it? I think I, you know, I think I might have to go around the neighborhood and pick up all the pieces that fell out of my costumes. I don't think I, actually, I might have some little paper, paper raffia here. Uh, Anna also says yes to stamp carving. So you have two. Okay, I've got to get on the stick on that one then. Uh, Sandy Lee, G, uh, Lay, Lee, Lindsay, do you think you'll do another craft room tour this January? And someone else would like a craft, another, uh, Maritza would like to also see a craft room tour. Oh, if I, if my craft room has changed very much, I will. I'm trying to think if it's changed that much since my last one. I did, I didn't feel like it had changed that much the last time. So instead of just the regular tour, I did kind of each part of my craft room. I, I kind of broke it down and showed how I stored each type of supplies in my craft room. So I think... I'm trying to think. I don't think I've changed it all that much. Mm. Probably refer to the older videos. Kathy shot one for me um, probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And that one was pretty, I don't think it's changed much since that. And then, so that's why I did the storage video this year because I thought that it just, it didn't really deserve a new, a new video since it hadn't, I hadn't really done much to it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Linda Henson. Hello. Uh, hi, Lindsay. Are you going to do any Christmas crafts? 12 of them at least. <laughs> we have the 12 days of craftness coming up and I've teamed up with six YouTubers that I absolutely love. And we're going to be bringing, I'll be bringing you six, uh, at least I'll be bringing you six in that, that vicinity and they'll be bringing six. So we will have 12 new craft tutorials together um there'll be cards home decor teachers gifts um a painting cinnamon cooney is going to be on with a painting Ooh. um so it's going to be a lot of fun and something, uh, for everyone. something for everyone and hopefully kind of like easy things that that anybody can make that will be things that people actually want you know because sometimes it can be really hard to, to to figure out it can be hard enough to buy a gift that some it's not going to collect dust but to make something that people actually want and will use um it's very challenging especially when you're getting so many things at once like people do at at christmas time so uh lindsay i don't see many spectrum noir coloring i have a hard time blending them what do you suggest um i would suggest practice i would suggest using the lighter colors um, like kind of coloring your item in with a lighter color first and then um, going in with then coloring from dark to light after you've kind of colored the whole thing with your lighter color. They are a little bit more challenging to blend. I found, I'm not exactly sure why, but they just feel like the, the colors aren't as fluid as 
as other markers. Um, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They just seem to take a little bit more of a learning curve than others. I need to use that a little bit. Uh, Valerie Lewis, I have a thin line glue gun like yours, but it is clogged and only drips glue out. Any suggestions on how to unclog? Mine isn't really that thin. Mine's a pretty, mine's a pretty standard tip. Um, and I haven't had it clogged. Me, are you sure that it's not just kind of burning out? Because sometimes the guns burn out. They should be, be melting. I've burned through several in my crafting career. So it could be that, that it's just burnt out. Uh, Carly's Crafty Corner and Shop. The Memento re-inkers are on sale for $2.99 at Joann's. Oh, great. So if anybody needs any re-inkers, Joann's will be the place to get them right now, it looks like. Nice. Um... Uh, Carla's Crafty Corner Shop. What is raffia? It's a, um, it's, it's actually comes from these up uh, like very long branched palm trees. It's a grass type grass from like the, or leaf from this type of palm tree. And, um, I think like the, the strands can grow like six feet long or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, some jute would be good. I think I've, in that little drawer right in front of you right here. Oh, actually. Oh, you mean the big, big, uh, big coat of yeah. assorted fibers yep there we go i've got some jute here let's see what can we do with this uh <sighs> jazzy kevy boo 22 for a source of inspiration you should come up with some craft challenges for us to try out that would be kind of fun that would be, and then people could send in pictures or and you could show them online to see what different people come up with oh that'd be a good idea anyone can also share their uh their artwork on the facebook group uh, oh, the frugal that's... crafter and just go to facebook.com slash the frugal crafter and um share your artwork there too you could also um i'm very i'm always a little confused about how to find the stuff but if you like go on instagram and you and you post your work and you like i think you can do like send it to me like at the frugal crafter or if you hashtag the frugal crafter i go and search that every once in a while to see mm. what people have been uploading and um that's always kind of cool to see i'm very unhip i'm not on facebook or instagram i'm uh, let's see. Uh, Debbie Pippin, my scrappy friends are always telling me to stop adding product to my page. How <laughs> do you know when enough is enough for your page? Pro uh, at the point where I feel like, oh, I overdid it. That's usually when I stop. <laughs> so I usually go a little bit beyond. I usually yeah. overshoot a little bit. I also find if I start uh, looking at stuff and taking stuff, putting stuff on and taking it off, I find sometimes getting up and walking away and getting a drink or making some tea or you know whatever uh and i come back that helps me decide that i'm done yeah sometimes just walking away for a few minutes um kitty cat creations what are some people who inspire you to do everyday crafts or everyday work Every day, some people. Can you read that again? What are some people? I think they meant who. Oh, okay. Who are some people who inspire you to do every to do everyday crafts or everyday work? Do you think they mean like to to make something every day, or people that know. inspire me every day? I'm uh, sure. Oh boy. Um. Oh gee. Uh. <laughs> I don't, I don't watch a ton of, of videos, YouTube videos, or visit too many blogs because I don't want to subconsciously copy people. Um, gosh, I'm, I feel like I'm on the spot now. <laughs> uh, let me think. I guess, you know, sometimes I'll just scroll through, like, Pinterest or Instagram, especially if I'm, like, trying to come up with an idea for a kid's class, and I find that quite inspiring. Um... Um, there's, there's a few like YouTubers I subscribe to that are like um, there's an art journaler Jenny Belly. She usually she always I mean she does more like she'll talk about the why of why we're creative instead of it being like a project. It's not so much a project, but talk about the why. Um, I read I listened to a really great pod. It wasn't a podcast. It was an interview with John Cleese, and he was talking about creativity, like oh. and how creativity works, and um, how you have to give yourself time without pressure to be creative. I like to listen to stuff like that yeah. and podcasts. And um, I find like the paper clipping round table to be very inspiring. Just I, for some, I think that I, I learn very, like I, write, I absorb information a lot better in audio format. So um, I would say stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm always, I, I always have some sort of stimulation going, whether it's like um, 
like I'll have, you know, shows on Netflix going or something or podcasts going or something that's kind of like I'm finding interesting at the moment, mm. not necessarily art related, but, um, but something that I'm finding interesting at the moment. Um, let's see. Bonnie Lee, have you ever used gold foil and which technique do you like best? The only thing I've ever used foil wise was a, um, well actually I had the stuff that you use like a heat and stick powder or adhesive and you press the foil into and you rub it down. Um, and I wasn't that impressed with it. And I've all, I also had this hot pen that I found that I got at the dollar store like years ago and I use that a bit, but, but the novelty wore off pretty quickly. So I really haven't, um, haven't done much with that. Maybe I will. I could probably use my creative hot marks on that. Oops, mm -hmm. I just went over my two. I don't know. Do that, <laughs> and the other nice thing about washi tape it peels right up. Peel it off. Um, how to and DIY would like you to send some snow to central Texas. Oh, happy to. How much well, you we want? Don't, we don't have any yet. <laughs> we will soon enough, yeah. I'm sure. We've been lucky, we haven't gotten any this time last year. Oh man. Um, Let's see, Ver Verencia, tuning in from Massachusetts. Question, I have a yes. brand new mini distress ink pad that got dried out because the lid fell off. How can I revive it? I would use water and glycerin mixed water together. Water and glycerin, yep. okay. I think that's what's in the ink refresher too, the, the uh, brand name ink mm -hmm. refresher, the Ranger brand. I, I mean, I can't say I'm not a, you know, I don't work for them, but that's what I would guess. Is in there. It can't hurt to try. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, it's dried up, right? I mean, yeah. you could buy rinker and put rinker in it, but it sounds like there's already ink. You just left the, the lid fell off. The lid came off. So, uh, Sandy Lee, one of my nephews is coming over tomorrow for the day, and I need to do a craft with him. Any crafty boy ideas? Oh, let's see. Um, boys generally like to do clay. I find that to be a very popular like craft when I'm doing library crafts with boys. Um, you could do clay Christmas ornaments. You could do um, just any sort of clay figurines. Let them sculpt. Like um, get like a, just a multi pack of colored Sculpey and let them you know make what they want, or even just plain Sculpey and let them paint it after you bake it. That's what I would recommend. Uh, Karen Robertson, have you done any pocket letters? I haven't. It looks kind of neat. Do you know what they are? I don't. So they I are, ask you what they were. They are, um, they're done in like baseball card page protectors and they're almost like, um, Project Life except the, you, I think you would, you may, you like do a whole page, like a layout of them and then you mail them off to somebody. Like you can fold them up so they fit in an oh, envelope. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is kind of neat. So, uh, no, but I haven't, I haven't done any. I, I like the concept. But I need I need the I need a reason I guess I need a reason to do it mm. I I you know I do seem a little kind of crazy and random but I actually usually have a reason if I'm doing something if I'm crafting <laughs> something I do I mean, there's a reason <laughs> um, usually when I'm making something so I need I need to have the reason before I before I make it especially when I'm gonna do a tutorial because I you know want to give people a reason why they might want to make it too uh, Danielle Tierney Tranter how about having a board for sharing work on Pinterest. Yeah, I wonder how that works. So, can I make a board and people can add to it? I don't know. I don't. Or would I have to pin it? Or you would probably you would have to put stuff on it. Oh yeah, could I could do that. I could do and that. It. And that, I mean, that wouldn't take any more time because that would just be uploading yeah. whatever you already have on the computer up to right. a board. Right. Yeah. Hazel, she's being weird. Well, hey, I think we're just about the hour mark. Do you want to see if we can, we can see if we can, like, uh, turn the camera on us? And... Oh, God, I don't know. I didn't put any makeup on Oh, today. yeah, me neither. I did take a shower, though, so I'm already... I'm going to see if I can change the camera. Oh, Beverly Mossman, are you cold up there? Well, Beverly, it's, it's actually, bad right now. when I came over, it was 55, which is pretty warm for this time of year. Let's see. Can I turn my camera? I don't know if I can change my camera. I'm going to try. Let's see what happens. Let's see. We'll keep talking. <laughs> we'll keep um, talk. Oh gosh, what do they do? <sighs> Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, oh, Anna, what can I do with crumble, crumbly Fimo clay? I tried baby mineral oil, and I think it makes it less sturdy. Um, oh, that's a tough one. I have done that. I have. Um, I don't remember how I changed my camera. Um, I have added a clay conditioner. I've tried baby oil, and I think at, at some point you it just you just like kind of have to toss it. Sometimes you get you truck baked, up. like the the clay gets baked in the truck. The truck gets too hot. Yeah. And then, yep. Um, and then there's not really anything else you can do, unfortunately. 
Um, Tilted Asylum. Lindsay, you can make a Pinterest board that people can add to. Yeah. Hmm. Um, could you do a tutorial on how to blend street spectrum oh spectrum noir markers typo oh um yeah probably let's see they they pretty much go i'm not trying to change the camera um they pretty much work just the same as any alcohol marker they're just a little bit trickier to blend but yeah i can uh, let me make a note of that just so i don't write it down yeah better write it down i'm gonna forget about it let's do uh how many do one or two more questions and then um well yeah we could do a couple more uh let's see how to and dyi Please do more soap tutorials. So we have soap, Spectrum Noir, some Christmas stuff, which of course you already yep. have uh, planned. But yeah, I think uh, I think people. I think uh, I'm not getting any more questions. I don't know all if right. got them all answered or well. Let's show the final project. Let's show the final the final thing here. We have our Halloween 2015 layout. I thank you so much for joining us today, and the replay will be available here. I've got some glare on that picture. So, um, if you have any, if you guys, if you could do me a favor, if you could just hop into the um, the comment section after this goes off air, and just let me know that you were here because the chat will go away and I won't be able to see. I'm going to see if I can maybe catch some of it, highlight some of it, and copy it and paste it into the chat. But I'm not guaranteed that I can do that. Um, and just let me know that you were here and let me know what you thought about the live show and uh hopefully we can bring you one every week or something if I sarah's yeah. willing yeah. i i'm free on fridays so. awesome well thank you so much for watching and until next time happy crafting